there's some real challenges there um, for ecologists and for our simple messages. One simple message, for instance, is that biodiversity is always a good thing. Saving biodiversity always helps. And I, I think the connections, our understanding of the connections between biodiversity to ecosystem functioning, to ecosystem services, to those things that people care about are still weak. And enhancing biodiversity may not always enhance human well-being, and we still don't have a really good handle on when and under what circumstances it does. The other thing we really need to grapple with is that ecosystem services sometimes trade off against each other. Enhancing one service sometimes degrades another. Now this is just another way of saying biodiversity can't always improve everything, because if that were true, all we'd have to do is enhance biodiversity and all ecosystem services would improve. Instead, oftentimes we find that improving one ecosystem service degrades another. And as ecologists and even as social scientists, we still don't have the frameworks for understanding that. How will a slight change in a particular ecological configuration affect all the way through to functioning and services and human well-being, the value that people derive from particular landscapes? And even once we understand that set of trade-offs, how do we have the conversation that says, which is the one that's most desirable? So there's some, there are some real challenges for ecologists just as a discipline, but also for the way ecologists connect to social scientists in understanding how we have to manage our natural resource systems. And it goes way beyond saving biodiversity. It goes towards understanding those very real trade-offs we face in the system, that we can't have every ecosystem service at maximum level, and understanding what people value, and understanding how small changes in the ecological system will alter that stream of benefits that people experience.